What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video, we're gonna be looking at specifically detail levels when it comes to views and specific elements that you might find in your views. And then even further on, where we can start to change some of those settings because we might wanna change the way certain elements look at different detail levels. So I will say before we jump into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, or you just like the video, then if you wouldn't please mind demolishing that like button, really helps me out so much. So getting into it now, I'm in just a basic template, out of the box, Revit 2020, nothing special here. So, so this should be very consistent to what you're working with. So I'm in just a basic floor plan, again, nothing special with this floor plan, but we wanna to start to look at the detail level. And you'll find the detail level at the bottom left of your view, and it shows detail level here. And you've got choices between fine, medium, and coarse. So the basic idea between these is there's the idea being that you want to use a different detail level depending on the type of view that it is. Well, let's say it's uh, a, little, a large overall floor plan. It's you know, a big area in it, whether it's big or small, it doesn't matter. But you're more likely to want to use a medium or coarse setting and this applies directly to the detail of what is shown in the view and so this is going to be where you're de determining what level of detail you're actually seeing in that view and this doesn't just apply to floor plans it applies to every single view in Revit I think except detail like actual detailed items like any sort of annotation or a, a 2D view a 2D sheet nothing like that but it does apply to all views that you'd make and you'll find it here. It also is found within templates. If you have a view template, I have a view template here. You can actually see the detail level here. It's all the same. It's, it's something else that is carried within the template to determine the detail level of that particular view. So let's start to change the detail level of this particular view and see what happens. And we can then determine what we might want to do and what we want to show, and that's all based on the detail level. So I'm going to zoom in here actually to this wall because you're going to see most of the changes within the details of walls. And of course it will apply to a lot more elements and I'll get into that later, but let's first look at it when it comes to this wall. So again, I've got this set to medium and now if I change it to coarse, we can see what happens. Well, everything, all the detail within the wall and all the, the structure of the wall is no longer shown. If I go into the structure of the wall, I can see there's all these different materials and components that are built into the wall that we just saw with a detail level of medium. So again, if I change that back to medium, we can start to see all the different layers of my wall come back. And I will say you will actually still see them if I turn thin lines on, I can see them. And if I go back to course, they'll all leave. But for the sake of this, I do want to keep thin lines off so we could see the edges a little easier. So going back to medium, we can see I get all of my different wall structures back. And then finally, if I go to fine, you can notice really nothing happens. Well, the difference between medium fine and fine in views is for the most part, and like 99% of the time negligible, and you'll almost never notice. I will say now that there are specific instances and if, you know, and it almost depends on certain models that you bring in because models can be built in a certain way to where a piece of it is just no longer displayed within coarse or medium detail and that you have to go to a fine detail in a particular view for something to be seen or like actually viewable. And you might ask, what's the advantage of this? Why would you want to have this? Well, if you have a highly detailed model or if you have a highly detailed component, it doesn't even have to be a whole model, then you're able to determine what is viewed in a particular view to, de you know, to organize your data because what you're presenting in a particular view may be very basic. You know, just looking at a, a floor plan, as detailed as it might be, you just want to look at it on a really basic level. And so having this turned on to course means I don't see any of the interior walls, you know, structure of the walls, there's nothing like that. It's real basic. It's like this is the most basic looking floor plan because I can't really get anything beyond, you know, that is a wall, like the real basic part of it. Now, if you have a large plan, if you have a, a detail view, some sort of section detail, then of course you're probably gonna wanna go up to a medium detail. 
And in that case, you start to actually see the components that are built into the wall. And so if I, I'll actually cut a section here so we can see this in a section. And again, it applies all the same. If I cut a section here, I've got my section. It's default at coarse. And so the second I go to medium, I can see all of the, the pieces of my wall show up. And if you're making any sort of detail, especially if it's a, a higher scale, I can go to like one and a half and we can really get the detail here. Now, of course, if I go back to course, it's just all gone. Like well, you would never do this if you're using the model and I, I'd recommend using the model. But if I go to fine, you know, we'll notice there's no difference between fine and medium. It looks all the same. And that's just because the wall is built in the way that we don't see anything change from medium to fine because all of our detail is showing up in medium. So looking back now at this floor plan, I can see, of course, we went through all the details of this wall, but where does this begin to apply to uh, specific components? Well, this let's go into this door. And now this door, if you notice, it doesn't change at all and it hasn't changed. And as I go from coarse to medium, nothing really happens. And, you know, that's fine. It's just, it's the way that the door is built. But this is, you know, just a basic door in Revit. You know, there it is, nothing special. So I'm going to go into the family here and specifically go into the floor plan, the ground floor of this view, and I can see you know, all my lines and everything, and you know these are just lines for the door. But I do want to point this out in that I can select you know, this, this actual swing line, for instance, and maybe I don't necessarily want this to be seen if I have a, a medium detail. I want this only to be seen in fine. Okay, well, we can actually make that happen. So if I select really anything in here, but specifically this line, because that's what I want to work with, I can come up to visibility settings, and here you can see it says symbolic element visibility. Symbolic elements are view direction specific. The on, they only show in views parallel to their creation view. Okay, well, basically saying this is showing up in a floor plan. Obviously, we know this. But if you look down here, I can see detail levels. Great. This is, you know, this may not tell you what it's doing, but what this is actually doing is allowing you to decide where you want to see this particular line. Do I want to see it in course? Do I want to see it in medium? Do I want to see it in fine? Well, like I said before, maybe I just want to see this in fine. So I can turn all these off and just leave it on fine. And if I hit OK, great, nothing happens. But what I'm going to do now is load this into my project. I will override it. And look at that. As soon as I <laughs> load it into the project, I can see that's gone. And that's because I'm in a medium, I'm in a medium view, a detail level of medium. And you know, I can't say why you'd want to do this, but as an example, you can clearly see how it's working. And once again, I'm going to put this on fine, and hopefully this swing of the door, just that basic line, will reappear. And there we go. That is a perfect example of when, and well, not necessarily when, but how you might want to use the different levels of medium, fine, coarse, whatever it might be. Now, I'm going to put up a graphic now that will give you a better example of when you might want to use and how you might start to see these different detail levels being used in your project, whether it's you know in a, a specific view or maybe it's a particular element in this case. Because if we look at this door, you know, they've obviously changed the way that this door swing and line appears in different uh, levels of detail. So I, you can actually change the way a line looks. It's not just a matter of showing because you can hide a particular line and then show a different line altogether in a different detail level. Whereas it actually works in 3D as well. I can simply take you know, the push of a door and put it into a fine detail to where if I don't have a, a view on fine, I just won't see it at all. And that makes you know, perfect sense. You know, why would I see it otherwise? You may not need to see it at all. And that's, that's kind of the point. If you have a really detailed model, a really detailed element, the idea is I probably don't need to see every little nut and bolt in you know on the model that if you know maybe you've gone to the trouble to do that and so you probably want to have the option of seeing that maybe you have a really specific elevation that you need to call out and dimension very specific details of that door maybe even all the way down to the nuts and bolts but maybe just showing the push of that door getting the elevation of that push and you really only need to see that in a like a single elevation view to call it out and that's where you have that particular view on fine whereas everywhere else you don't need to bother yourself or the model with having to deal with displaying that and trying to 
view that all the time. It's just not worth it. It doesn't make any sense. So again, you can apply all this into the view template, and then you can see how this all starts to play into views. It's, I will say as a rule of thumb, I generally live in medium. I, I try and not go to fine unless I really need to, because you know, as well as that, a lot of things will, won't change when it comes to fine. It's just kind of not worth doing. As you know, anything in this view hasn't changed when I go from medium to fine until I've actually changed that door. So that's just, that's just me. I've never really needed to go to fine unless I've made something myself and put it on fine or found something that I needed to import that happened to be on a fine detail. The last thing I want to cover is an, an example of where you might want to use a course view. And from my experience, I've used course floor plans and, and that's really the only views I've ended up using like actually course, maybe entire building sections you might want to have on course, but maybe even not that, but where I've used course pretty successfully is within floor plans and specifically life safety plans. And I've done that because you're able to change this hatch or change what you see in the center of this wall based on the detail level. And we can see that if we go into the wall type, hit edit type here, and coming down to graphics, we can see coarse scale fill pattern and then coarse scale fill color. Okay, well, by default, as you can see, there is no coarse scale fill pattern, which means I, I have no pattern. And just like before, if I put this on coarse, I see nothing. You know, it's, it's white. That, that makes perfect sense because if I come into the wall type, there's nothing there. Now, maybe we want to add something there. And again, the, the reason I've seen this done before and the, the way I use it is on life safety plans because it might be that this particular wall needs to be fire rated and you may need one hour, two hour, whatever it might be, but all of this can change based on your coarse scale fill pattern. And the nice thing about this is that, again, you're only seeing this in coarse. So I can have these walls that show up wherever I want, however I want, doesn't matter. And the second I change my specific life safety plan to course, all of a sudden I can see what I need to see from a graphical standpoint and fire rating. So how would I do this? Well, I don't have a specific hatch for fire rating or anything like that, but I will go ahead and put in just a basic cross hatch so we can see what's happening. And for the sake of this, I will also make it red so we can see it a little better. So I'll hit okay. And as soon as I do that, it's very clear that this wall is, let's say, fire rated or something like that. There's something specific going on to this wall. And this doesn't have to be, you know, just for fire ratings or life safety plans or anything like that. You can do this for really anything. But just be aware that this specific wall, this type and wherever it's used, if it's in a view that has a detail level, of course, it's just going to show up this way. And this will apply to the section, of course. I'll put this back to course. And there we can see it now. My, my, the scale is ridiculous, but there it is. It's still there. It's going back to my level one. I can see it. And as I zoom out, I can see everywhere I have that wall used is also showing up with that coarse scale fill pattern. And that's great. So that's where I would probably begin to use this. So that's really where I'd start to use that. And, you know, Honestly, otherwise, I'm not using course, and I've said this before in this video, I'm not using course unless it's something specific like this, or if I want to have a, just a real basic floor plan, nothing special, maybe I, I'm showing a client a floor plan for the very first time, and I have all of these different components built into it, because you know I, I want to build walls normally, I don't want to just use generic walls, but I have all these walls built correctly, at least in my mind from a design standpoint, and maybe I just don't want to show the client that right now. So I can turn it on to course and you know, you can put in fill patterns, whatever you want. It's a simple way of doing that. You don't have to do any specific overrides, but you know, there's a number of ways to get different overrides, but this will allow you to avoid having to deal with overrides and just simply set this by wall type showing in a course floor plan or view, anything like that. So if you have any questions about this detail level, course, medium, fine, leave that in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer those. And if I missed anything, also let me know if, you, if you've used these detail levels in a different way. I'm really curious, always looking to learn something about these different detail levels. But that will do it for this video. If you did happen to like it or just, you know, you did learn something because that's kind of the goal here. I want you to learn something. 
if you wouldn't mind demolishing that like button, it really helps me out a lot. Also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also helps me out so much and I can't thank you all enough who have. Hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.